Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can use the keyframe patch in Spark AR to create smooth animations using 3D objects. It's pretty simple, pretty cool. They introduced this feature a few versions ago, but I've only just started playing with it and I wanted to show it off a little bit. If you find this video useful, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, all that good stuff, and we'll just jump straight into it. Okay, so here we are in a new project, and the first thing I'm gonna do is head down here to the library, and I wanna add a 3D object. Fortunately, Spark already has a full collection of primitive shapes that you can play around with, but if you select 3D objects here and you're signed in using Sketchfab, which is their partner site for 3D assets, then you can scroll through, browse from the collection that they have and import pretty much anything you like or one of your own models if you've designed one in Blender or 3ds Max or a program like that. But for this, we're just gonna be using a simple 3D object. So I'm gonna select one from here. I think the heart looks pretty good. So we're gonna grab that heart primitive, import that into my scene and you'll see it appear down here in the assets panel. Now we're gonna right click in this box, add a face tracker to our scene so that we have something to root this object to. And then I'm gonna take the heart and I'm just gonna drag it inside of the face tracker so it's nested in here. And we can decorate this a little bit. So I'm gonna scale it up, make it a little bit easier to see. We'll go to two, two and two on all three axes. It's a little bit bigger now, a little bit easier. Now we're gonna come down to the assets panel, select our heart and just drop it down so we can see the heart material that's applied by default. You see it's physically based because it has an environment texture. So if we change the color to something heart colored, maybe like a nice pink, maybe a little bit darker, uh, and then we can just increase and decrease these metallic ranges to create some nice reflective properties, make it nice and shiny, maybe a little bit less shiny, we'll make it slightly more rough. Uh, and once we have something that we're happy with, what I'm gonna do next is double tap in our patch editor, and I'm gonna add the keyframe patch. Now you'll see this allows you to create and edit a custom transition between a set of values. And basically this works in a similar sense to any keyframe animation program like Flash or even in Blender they have something similar. So what I'm gonna do is connect a loop animation to this and I'm just gonna drag that up here, connect from progress to the keyframe animation. And now we wanna select our heart up here and we're just gonna choose the position. So we're gonna create a patch out of the position and if we get that connected up, then you'll see nothing has happened. And the reason for that is that you need to actually go inside of this keyframe. So if we click this little arrow icon here, it will open up the keyframe patch. And unlike most other patches, you'll get a different layout in here. You'll be able to see this keyframe animator. Uh, and by default, let me get rid of that. By default, it's set to be 60 frames. So everything within this space to this space is 60 frames of animation. You can scroll through and you can select different frames and you can extend this so you can make it uh, 120 frames if you want and that will increase it you could decrease it down to 30 frames 60 works pretty well though so i'm just going to leave it at 60 and now you'll see this line going across here and this line this red one here is connected to the x coordinate you can also select the y coordinate in green or the z coordinate in blue and each of these is a different line that you can apply animation to so you can add frames in between this blue line and this blue line. And you can create movement by adjusting the positions of your keyframes on this axis here. So between minus one and one. So if we head to our Y axis, which is the up down coordinate, then what we can do is select a keyframe right in the middle on frame 30. And if we hit this button down here, then it will add a new keyframe. You'll see the diamond appear. So we have a keyframe by default set on our first frame and on our final frame. And now we have one in the middle as well. So what we can do is take this frame and we can move it up and you'll see the animation immediately applied. Uh, we can move it up here, you can move it down. Uh, if you move it, it's like quite sensitive, so don't move it too far up, but if we go to somewhere like that, then, oh, I'll just make sure it's set to frame 30. And now if I hit play, then you'll see the animation loop is running. So that's pretty sweet, right? Pretty cool. I'm gonna pause that. And uh, what I'm gonna do is add another frame here. So we can add it anywhere and then just move it around. So that was on frame 17. I want it to be on frame 15. And I'm just gonna bring that down to about there. So now if we hit play again, then you'll see it now loops up and down. It's a little bit juttery. So the more frames you add, the smoother the animation will be. But I think that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna pause that. I'm gonna add a new frame here. And I'm just gonna move that down to about the same position as here. So you can also see the Y coordinate and the frame that you're on. So if I put that at minus 0.15, I can bring this one to minus 0.15 as well. And now if I hit play, then we get this interesting bouncing effect. And once you're satisfied with the animation loop in here, it moves pretty fast. You wanna head back to your main patch area 
And because our loop animation is the thing that's triggering it, the duration is currently set to be one second. And that's why it's moving so quickly. So if I change that to be, I don't know, five seconds maybe, and you'll see it slows everything down. And it makes for a much smoother transition between those keyframes that we've created. You can also mirror it. So now it will go up, go down, and it will just kind of loop that over and over again which I think is pretty sweet. You can apply this to any model, any 3D asset. So what I'm gonna do now is just add another one. So I'll head back down to our library. We'll go to 3D shapes. I'll import, I don't know, we'll go with a tetrahedron. I almost said triangle there. So we'll import that. Uh, and once we have it, you'll see it appears down here. And if we just take this, drag it inside of our face tracker, then you'll see that appear right on my nose. It actually covers the nose pretty well. I'm gonna scale that one up to two as well, two on the X, two on the Y, two on the Z. Uh, and now we can apply another material to it. So I don't know what color a tetrahedron is in nature, but I will make my one green. And we'll just apply a little bit of roughness. I'm only applying these materials and the roughness and creating the metallic so that you can see how it reacts to the light. So as it's moving, you'll notice the heart has some reflective properties to it. That's because of the default environment texture here, which is automatically applied to every 3D model you import that is part of Spark's primitive shapes library. So I'll make that a little bit less rough. Uh, we've got shiny there. And now what I'm gonna do is select our tetrahedron, create a position for it. We'll do the same thing again. We'll create a loop animation, drag that here, connect out from progress, we'll add a new keyframe patch. It's important that if you're moving things separately from one another, that they have their own patches. So we're gonna connect this animation value here to the 3D position of our tetrahedron. And then we can open up this keyframe patch. And this time I'm gonna move it on the X coordinate. So it'll be going left to right. So I'm just gonna add another keyframe. I'm gonna drag that slightly to the left. We'll put it at frame 15 and we can have it go to there. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So I'm gonna add a new keyframe at 45. And we'll drag that down to uh, about there. You wanna make sure that you're not basing this off of this preview here, but rather the device preview. So we're gonna drag that down to about there and make sure it's on the right frame. So frame 45. And now if we hit play, then you'll see this bouncing across the screen. There's a little bit going off the edge here, so I can adjust that and I can take this down slightly, bring it back towards the center, hit play again. Once you're satisfied with the result, we can back out of here and just adjust our loop animation. I'll make this one 3.75, mirror it, and there you go. Now we have two objects tracking onto our face, moving across the screen, all animated around one another, which is looking pretty good. So now I'm just gonna hide these two and I'm gonna add one more shape. So we'll go back in here and I'm gonna add a star. So we'll import this star into our scene. Uh, and you can't see the others because I made them invisible right now, but we're gonna drag our star into the face tracker. I'll scale it up again because by default they're pretty small. So we'll bring that up to two, two and two. Select our star, drop it down, adjust our material properties. We know that stars are pretty yellow. So we'll make that yellow, bring the roughness down, metallic up, just so you can see the reflective property that's a result of the environment texture. And now we're gonna create the same thing again, a loop animation keyframe and connect that up to our position here. But this time what I'm gonna do is combine those X and Y values to create something that moves in a square around the screen. And if you wanna zoom in a little bit, then these controls here allow you to zoom in and out of your timeline so you can get a better view of what's going on. It allows for a little bit more refinement. So what I'm gonna do is scroll down to frame 15. We're still on the X axis here. I'm just gonna add a keyframe. And I'm gonna drag that up to around 0.1. And then what I'm gonna do is move to frame 30. And I'm gonna add a second keyframe. And because we're making this move in a square, what I'm gonna do is control the left and the right first. So if you imagine that this is gonna go right and then down, so there's no movement on the x-axis while it's going down. And then once it gets to the bottom, it's gonna move left again. So we want it to come all the way back over here. So at frame 45, I'm gonna add another keyframe. I'm gonna bring that one down to our zero position. And now if we hit play, then you'll see it goes left, right, left, right, and back again. So now we can make some keyframes for our Y coordinate and we're gonna do them on the same actual frames. So frame 15, add one here for the Y position. And because at first nothing's happening, it's just going from left to right. We're gonna leave this one at zero. And then I'm gonna move over to frame 30, add a keyframe here, and this is where it goes down. So I'm gonna move this one down to minus 0 0.1. And now if we scroll through, you see it goes from left to right stays on the right and then starts heading down. 
and once it gets to frame 30, it's going to start moving to the left again. But we need to add a keyframe here at frame 45, where we bring this down also to 0.1, because we don't want any movement on the Y while it's going from left to right. So these are basically alternating with each other. And now if we hit play, you'll see we have this star that moves right, down, left, up, and it just does that consistently until the loop is stopped. So I'll hit pause, we'll head back here, and we can mirror that. So if we wanted, we could have the star go all the way around and then go back on itself. Or you can uncheck that box and it will just continually loop around in a square forever. So this is a really useful patch. Like I said, you can come in here and you can zoom in and you can extend this to be as many frames as you want. So you could add a complicated model with a skeleton rig or something like that, that which you've modeled yourself. And you could add as many frames in here as you want. You can add one literally for every single frame. So you could have the movement be super refined, super detailed and create the smoothest transitions possible, which is a lot simpler than having a loop animation connected to a transition, which is the previous way that people were doing this. So you connect that up to the 3D position via a transition, and then you would just have it move back and forth between two set coordinates. Whereas with this one, you have a lot more control over the movement itself. So I'll just make these the heart and the tetrahedron visible again. We can see everything in its chaotic beauty. And I'll switch over to the FaceTime camera so you can see what it looks like, like on a real person. So now you'll see we have the tetrahedron going left to right and back again. We have the heart, which goes up and down. And then we have the star, which combines the X and the Y, which is going up, right, down, left. And it's just doing that over and over again. So like I say, you can do this with any model. Uh, the 3D primitive shapes are a good place to practice. But you also have the Sketchfab library, which you can browse. There are hundreds, maybe thousands of models on there, which you can use for free. Or, or you can import your own. You can rig it up. You can animate every single component, every movement in the most refined way possible. One thing I was thinking of trying was maybe like a music box, you know, where you open it up and it has the ballerina dancing in there. So you could maybe have the box animated so that it opens up and then you have the ballerina dancing, maybe moving her arms and doing whatever. Uh, and then you could rig that up with music that you import and connect it all so it's synced and timed up and yeah, I think this is a really interesting patch. I probably should have made a video about this sooner, but I hopefully you found something in this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, all the things that people say to do. And thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.